Hello, listeners. This is Keith, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Die by the Sword podcast. Before we get into this episode, I want to give a big shout out to the guys over at Midnight Syndicate. You can check out their music over at MidnightSyndicate.com. And we'd also like to thank Sword Coast Soundscapes for the wonderful ambient sound you hear throughout our podcast. You can check them out at www.youtube.com forward slash Sword Coast Soundscapes. Also, check out our website at DieByTheSwordPodcast.com and get connected with the community by following us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Contact us at DieByTheSwordPodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to leave a great review wherever you listen to us. And now, let's get into this week's episode. Peeps, it ain't Easter, or is it? Is it I don't know, but I am wearing an I'm wearing a Easter classic shirt, so Easter softball tournament. <laughs> Maybe that's why it was in my head. Yo. It's like a classic Easter shirt. Is that some sort of like Jesus on the cross type thing? Or... <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be pretty classic. But uh, <laughs> no, it's a it's a softball tournament shirt. We call ours our Dallas tournament here the Dallas Easter Classic. Heathens. So we wear hats. We be in church. <laughs> Actually, we did used to have a bonnet uh, parade. Competition, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crowns of thorns. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> ow, this getting, ow. This is too risque. Yeah, yeah too a little bit. <laughs> I uh, mean, that's absolutely within theme, though. Yeah. yeah. It's true. So which side are you guys on the debate of? Are peeps delicious? Are peeps disgusting? Peeps are disgusting. I wouldn't call I wouldn't call them delicious, but I wouldn't also call them disgusting. I eat them because I feel bad for them. Wow, you're the one person that's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with they're not good. Uh, I don't know quite full disgusting, but yeah, I do not care for them really. Yeah, no, they're, I, they're, I agree. they're full disgusting. <laughs> now, the fun part is. You take a little uh, knife and you cut a little X in the uh, side of the peep, and then you microwave that puppy <laughs> and watch it do some amazing, uh, interesting things in the microwave. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you do with it after you take it out all hot and piping? Throw it away. I am not eating that. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so sad because I like marshmallows and I like sugar, but I don't like peeps. Mm-mm, that combination huh. is gross. Have they ever made like chocolate tea peep? Like, like I'm thinking like s'mores. So like a chocolate shell on the outside. Mm. That would probably be an improvement. Surely they had to have. I don't know. Because I was just about to ask if y'all made s'mores with peeps before. <laughs> I've not. Mm, no, no. But I like s'mores. Yeah. And I like those cookies that are essentially a s'more. That's the graham cracker cookie with the marshmallow dipped in chocolate. Mm, yes. I I looked up a uh, s'more peeps, and it's just recipes of people substituting peeps for <laughs> the marshmallow in a s'more. Oh, yeah. So, so they're super colorful <laughs> well, <wait>. s'mores. <laughs> you have to toast the marshmallow. That means you have to stick this sugar into fire. And I like mine like flaming. I like to get that char on the outside (laughs) (laughs) but but if you did that to a peep that would just make the sugar all acrid and gross yeah these Uh, pictures are just all brown and really like all their heads are really gross and stuff but the bottom of them are really colorful so it's really weird looking (laughs) (laughs) yeah you have like a peep flambe situation Mm. Oh, that's what I want. That's what I love is the flambe part. And you can hear it like see it burn up and you can hear it whistling. And then the <laughs> carbon with the sweetness tastes mm-hmm. so good. It's kind of crackly, like eating like, what is it? Uh, crepe paper or something. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it crepe paper, but yes. I think I'll pass on the peeps, the whole peep thing. 
reminds me of you know weird creatures speaking of weird creatures mm-hmm. um i had an incident today in the bathroom oh no. oh no <laughs> <laughs> did was it that fear that i have about snakes no no it wasn't that and i'm sure but that and i don't want to hear about this this could be bad but maybe along the similar lines uh, okay so my company has a new company doing the facilities, cleaning the facilities and stuff like that. And you know how they put like splash guards in the urinal mm-hmm. and the company puts its logo on there. Well, the company's name is Stingray. And so they went searching for a Stingray in all the, you know, Google images that they could find. And, um, I think they got things a little confused because what they got was not the sea creature. What they got was, oh, it was the the face hugger. No, the face hugger from Alien. And it's staring at me. Mm -hmm. And you're just Ah! (laughs) How does that even, how do you, I don't understand. Stingrays don't have legs. This thing had legs. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like Ooh. that is wild. Somebody felt I am biology. Not, I don't want to go in there. <laughs> yeah, I. I, don't I mean, that's kind of like the snake. Uh, uh, yeah, kind of. So when you go in there to pee, do you pretend like you're a colonial marine and you're, you know, <laughs> your thing's a <laughs> one of the machine guns? You nuke it? No, I'm orbit. nuking it from my orbit. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking a dump in the urinal? You, sir, are disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I said nuke it. I didn't say I duke it. I nuke it. <laughs> I've heard of Duke Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> so going to that, though, does it have like the little, is it textured? He didn't touch it. I did yeah. not touch it, but it is. You can look at it. You can tell it's raised. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Those are the best ones because they have like no splashback. Hmm. Yeah, but I, I don't care if the face hugger is splashing or not. <laughs> <laughs> Stay there. Stay there. Just wanted to there. <laughs> Stay off of me. <laughs> I want to go to a doctor and say, look, I got a face hugger. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> we may have to edit that one <laughs> nope <laughs> so in this uh, doctor visit which head did the thing attach to <laughs> yeah it's a good question <laughs> well he wasn't very muffled when he said it so <laughs> it wasn't like oh doctor <laughs> So wait, I do have a question though for Keith. Have yep. you seen Alien or Aliens? That's the one with Sigourney Weaver, right? <gasps> yes, mm-hmm. I have seen it. Oh, okay, good. What? Go me. I did it. <laughs> Score! <laughs> yes. So I get that reference. All right. I'm shocked. I know. Proud, but shocked. <laughs> Yes, I know. I saw it at probably too young of an age, both of them. And uh, they definitely scared me, but I still love them to this day. You, you want to know, know a movie that scared me when I was younger was It, the original It. I oh, watched yeah. it when I was like eight, and I had terrifying dreams for years. You mean like I the, see that. The, the Tim Curry It? Mm-hmm. Yep, that one. See, that was, it was not scary. Oh, it's, it, 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 I was... Anytime I saw a balloon, anytime I went to go wash my hands in a sink, I was afraid that like the blood thing would happen. Ooh, uh, yeah. You know, it was just, I don't know why it just, it messed me up. It was crazy. <laughs> I'm going to say that it was for a made for TV movie miniseries. Mm-hmm. It was pretty, it was scary. I thought so too when I was a kid. I'm not going to lie. Meh. <laughs> well, didn't you read the book when you were like five years old or something? I read it in fourth grade. Yeah. (gasps) So nine years old. Yeah. Damn. (laughs) I like Stephen King. What can I say? Me too. But I think I I read that one in eighth or ninth grade. One of the two. Damn, sir. 
I've never read the book, but I know there are adult situations in there. Yes, oh. yes there are. Yeah, didn't even make it in the actual movie because they were a little too, too weird. Yes. Uh, we'll say weird. Yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. Very weird. Um yeah, I'm sure there was stuff reading at it in you know fourth grade that I didn't comprehend what you know I was reading. That's true. I mean, there's like lots of like songs or movies you revisit, and I was like, oh, I was allowed to watch this or read that or listen to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. But yeah, that was have you read it again since fourth grade? Yeah, I have. <laughs> definitely different as you're an adult versus when you're a kid yeah. reading that book yeah i've read it a couple of times and because it was one of my favorites i don't know how i'd feel revisiting it if i was had read it when i was in fourth grade that'd be that'd be interesting mm-hmm. i don't think like... i read any stephen king until uh high school hmm. i had read almost every stephen king book for years and then I kind of fell off of reading them. So now I've fallen way behind. I did too. I, I read all the way up and through most of them all the way up through um, all the gunslinger stuff. And then well, kind I of fell off after that. The Dark Tower ah, series is my favorite. Yep. Same. And then um, did you have you read the 11, 22, 63, the JFK one? I haven't read it, but I've seen the series. I just read it the other day and it was really I was I was impressed. I hadn't read King like like you were, like you were saying in a while and I really enjoyed it. Mm. I want to go back and read the Dark Tower series though. I you know, I was I was cleaning out my closet the other day and I pulled all the book all those books out and I was like, I should give this another read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Green Mile is another good one. Oh yeah. That movie's so depressing. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's good. But it is very but, good, uh, yes. Marvel has nothing on Stephen King as far as like continu- like connectedness of his universe. It's so crazy oh, yeah. when you start reading through his books <laughs> after you've read Dark Tower. See all the connections. Yeah. Also, Maine seems like a terrible place to live. Maine. <laughs> so much going on there. Has Have you ever been to Maine? Because I've always wanted to go because of Stephen King, but I've never been. I've yeah, been there for a once. day. <laughs> Is it scary? <laughs> no, no. Hmm. Any any goosebumps fans? Oh yes, <laughs> oh, heck yeah. yeah. Which was your favorite? Which book was your favorite? I I can't. I love them all. I I think and we had Accelerated Reader. I don't know if you guys had mm-hmm. that in school. We had that, and that's I would read Louis L'Amour, Goosebumps, and Hank the Cow Dog. Oh, Hank the Cow Dog. I love those, Hank the Cow Dog. Those are my jams right there. That's that was that's I wrote read through all of those three series. <laughs> I can I can see the connection between Hank the Cow Dog and Louis L'Amour, but not the Goosebumps. Goosebumps, man. They were Louis just... L'Amour is the westerns, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I don't know how I got on those three, but yeah, I I loved reading all of those. Mm-hmm. Goosebumps came out when I was kind of older, so but. <laughs> I read a lot of uh, Choose Your Own Adventures back when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those were awesome. Uh, I had a young Indiana Jones one that I used to read a lot to try and see if I could do all of the endings. Did you get it? No, because I lost interest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it happened. That is the problem with ADD. Something else shiny is in front of your face. So you obsess with that instead. Squirrel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I had a problem today. Uh, it's a meeting and I, I'm a fidgety individual and I was trying real hard not to be fidgety. So my my upper body was totally still, but my legs were moving like crazy. And the lady in front of me says, who's hitting my chair? <laughs> <laughs> I had that happen to me at a theater. It's that <laughs> damn stingray. Shaking my leg, and the <laughs> lady who I did not know touched me on the leg to get me to stop. No. Touch me. I want to feel dirty. But I was like, I have a condition, ma'am. 
RLS is no joke. <laughs> She's like, you're shaking this whole row, son. <laughs> I that I hate that. Any road that's connected, like the seats are mm-hmm. connected, I hate that. Because I'm the leg shaker, too. And so it makes that whole damn row. Everybody's looking at you like, will you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Once they finally figure out who it is, they're like, let yeah. me see who this mm-hmm. Let me see I'm how you do to shame with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... What you get free vibrating seats? That's right. Yeah, yeah. No charge. <laughs> no charge. You're welcome for the massage. People pay hey, good actually, money for that. Twenty five yeah. cents at a time. At the Lux <laughs> down the street. <laughs> Give me your quarters. So now that we have, uh, you know, discussed our youth reading materials and restless leg syndromes, what have you guys been up to this week? Well, I've been, you know, creating a new character that's uh, coming into the to the podcast. Oh, oh that's yeah, right. that's spoilers. Right. We do new yeah, character. oh yeah, a little spoiler. And uh, yeah, since Sh- Shobert's taking a, a leave of absence right now, so I had to create a new new guy and uh, took a little thinking. And but I think I've got somebody good. Is his name Blow Bear? <laughs> yeah, it's yep. It's a brother. Is, um, say that one more time. What is his name? <laughs> yeah. It's a new toy by Mattel. <laughs> All right. So, so what can you tell us about this new character that doesn't like give too much away? We still want some surprises when he comes up. But. Okay. Well, he is um, dashing and daring, um, courageous and caring. Courageous, caring. He is a gummy bear. Gummy I, bear. That, that is actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's not as uh, squishy of a character, I hope, as the rogue. So I'm going to hopefully have fun with that. This will be the first time I played something that's not um, kind <gasps> of a. This is the first time I played something that's more of a frontline fighter. Hmm. Ah, so it's a frontline fighter then. <laughs> yeah, I thought we might be able to use a, a little little some of that. We could probably Stepping use more blue healer, shoes. But... <laughs> um, right now, do you think Diego could use a healer? Because Diego's the only frontline <laughs> fighter right now. <laughs> true, but a nobody's healer. a healer right now. <laughs> yeah, also true. <laughs> <laughs> but I did buy uh, uh, some cure cure medium wound cure moderate runes for uh, for my guy, so he's got a little bit of healing for himself, I guess. <laughs> so he's selfish. Okay, <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> good to know. He will not share. <laughs> so we've got a new character. So that means we need some uh, hit points rolled. I believe we do. Oh, we're gonna get another hit. Uh, what's, what's your, your hit die? die? It's a 1d10. Ooh. Ooh, He's a big guy. Ooh, it's so big. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So let's go ahead and roll those d10s. This is for level two. Ooh, I got a one. I got an eight. Oh, good. Okay, I'll take the eight. Level three. Ooh. Two. Seven. Lose those wow. dice. He, oh, he man, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna switch over so to my hard. other. Man, I'm gonna switch over <laughs> to my other ten sided here. <laughs> Level four. All right, got a three. Oh, I'm going one, two, three in order. Apparently, <laughs> I got five. Okay. Oh, great. So we're gonna pass. Hopefully, we're coming. You're coming down. I'm coming up. <laughs> well, okay. Level five. Oh, another three. Ten. Oh. Level we six. like it. We like it. Yeah, you see, you see why we keep dying. He's just rolling okay. all the high numbers. I know, right? I got a six this time. I got another ten. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Will you roll Level my six. attacks and stuff too? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Level uh, seven. Level seven. All right. Oh, out of Jesus the box. Christ. <laughs> ten. That's yeah. Eight. It's another oh. ten. <laughs> Dang. It's three tens in a row. <laughs> Man. Level eight. Gary's just tired of us getting killed. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was a three again. Seven. And level nine. Ooh, I got a ten. I got a one. 
<laughs> oh, <damn>. nice. Finally. <laughs> Man, your dude's going to be beefy. Man. He got all the beef. <laughs> My dice At least it worked tens. out in the clutch. <laughs> now, Gary, damn. if you could throw that dice away that you were just using to roll his hit points, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna uh, use it for all of my attacks on y'all. I'm just gonna roll that D10. It. Dang it! It says it says roll D20, uh, two D10s. <laughs> okay. So got a beefy frontline fighter over there with all those hit points. Yeah, if my calculations are correct, I'm at 87. Ooh, that puts Diego to shame. <laughs> I think we found the new tank. We've got your hit points. We got that all lined up. We know you're a, obviously a ninth level character like everybody else, but we'll uh, reveal a bit more about your character later on when we meet him. Wait, no plug replacement? No, damn. <laughs> no, no. Plug. My guy has two heads. If that's a wait, wait, what? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, but cutting back into the story. So Diego and Grubert and Jenny are all still here in this rundown house. And Chaubert has left. Jenny is really, um, I don't know if we went over this last time, but she's really mad. She feels abandoned. She feels um, like he has, because the two, we're down to that uh, our, we're, our death warrant is pretty much signed, but she's going to continue on. Well, yeah, and Diego does not feel well either because he lost two of the people he started with in the dreams. And now he is just going to have to continue on. Yeah, he's actually lost three from the dreams. Yes, this is true. So... Diego is the only one left from the dream sequences. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. How's he feeling about all that? <laughs> Diego saw all of his friends as giving him a purpose. So he will continue with that. Because he came to this because he was looking for a purpose. Uh, he had failed in passing completely with his monk status uh, due to his sister. So he's looking for redemption. So he will continue this quest. What about Gruber? He just met these people. I was going to say, Gruber's just in a weird place, right? Like, he's, like, new to the party, but then people are leaving, and people are upset, and he's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Vibes are definitely <laughs> off. Right. He sees Diego kind of sad. He sees Jenny pissed off. <laughs> he's like, um... Yeah. So he, he's trying to find... Kind of like Diego, I guess. He's... I mean, he's been roaming around, so he doesn't really have a purpose. So he's trying to find one, and he thought he found one here to help these, you know, this, this people. But it seems like they're uh, they're falling apart. So maybe he wants to help help mend that. Is he not second guessing? You know, maybe I should bail. Their people keep dying and leaving. Well, that's yeah, that's that's <laughs> a little bit yeah, because uh, he's seen a, a lot of death already. So. And they don't seem like Jenny's really mad and upset and yelling at everybody. So he's like, I don't know if I want to hang out with this lady. <laughs> I like the idea of the like big half orc being like, oh, man, he's a little, a little timid in this situation. Right. Bigger than everybody, but like, maybe I should go. <laughs> I left my Macedon double parked. 
<laughs> no, no, I'm out of here. She's very uncomfortable. <laughs> so I think that um, I am going to start off by asking Diego. You look pretty banged up. Do you need some healing? Jenny, my friend, yes, I I could use a bet if you if you can help. I'm gonna hit you with the uh, wand of cure moderate, which I forget which one it is. D two D eight plus one. Fourteen. Ooh, that is nice. Thank you. Do you need more? You should let Gary roll for uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gary, you should, you should roll for us. Uh, I could use one more shot like that, <laughs> actually. <laughs> okay. Cure moderate. Eight. Works. I'm only down ten now, so. Okay, well then I'm going to... Wand myself. Jenny's gonna wand herself. <laughs> and... Ooh, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> the Hitachi, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Heal for 12. I think I'm fine. And this is. Uh, Gruber, do you need anything? No, Gruber. Uh, Gruber says no. Jenny, I'm good. If the rest of the house is anything like that last room, I don't think we should go, like, up the stairs. We need to find another way up, up stairs. Well, yeah. there's this wall that's collapsed. We could possibly use that. Yeah, so How about which room was that? Uh, if we head south from where we're currently at... Uh, the wall, the outside wall had collapsed, uh, and the we could actually use that. I can grow into the large dire lion and help get you up to the second floor. I think that'll work. We, she thought for just a second because she was going to say we need someone to sneak in. But but and, we don't. You know, do reconnaissance. But <laughs> we're kind of down on that. Yeah, but me, yeah. But me and Diego are huge. <laughs> <laughs> so that means Jenny, uh, you go first. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's find this place first. So she goes out this first first door, and she's oh wait, there it is. It's right there. Yeah. So in the south, the dining room. All right. We're outside. Diego. I will to make that monster grow. Grow into the, the <laughs> dire lion. There go my key points. He's so big. And I will lift Jenny up and push her into the to the second floor. So as you're being lifted up to the second floor, Jenny, go ahead and give me a perception check. Ten. No, I'm sorry. Nine. Even worse. (laughs) Guys, we have to be on our A game. You know Gary's rolling fire apparently tonight. Gary, you're going to have to roll for us. (laughs) Roll for our demise. Okay, we move to the upstairs part of the map. Well, that looks weird. Jenny, tell us what you see. It's all foggy in here. So you see that portions of the ceiling and floor of this chamber have also collapsed like they did downstairs, as well as part of the eastern wall. Uh, You see uh, remnants of the wooden floor kind of sagging alarmingly. Um, But you think it'll hold enough to hold your weight. Um, You see bookshelves that still hold remains of 
paper and parchment that are kind of molded from just being exposed to the elements. And you notice kind of toward the center of the room, or what's left of the center of the room, a big fog cloud. So I'm going to relay that message. There's uh, Because she has a little bit, I wouldn't call it PTSD, but she remembers there was a fog <laughs> cloud earlier. Uh, when we fought that giant lady. So yeah, I'm going to say... It's kind of... It's kind... It's kind of worn up here. So be careful. Especially huge dire lions. <laughs> okay. But there's something in the middle I can't... There's something in the middle I can't quite see. It's like a big bezel. <laughs> it's looking to see if I have anything to... I don't have any, like, air spells, so I can't get it out of here. So, I'm going to... While Jenny's doing that, I Diego will boost uh, Grubert up. Ooh, don't touch me there. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> no, All right. getting, Diego getting handsy. Mm-hmm. Got that All big right. paw giving you the boost. That's right. <laughs> Get bow cheeks. Make sure he's got those nails retracted. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Unless you like it. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> My butt was itching earlier, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, he. As he gets boosted, I'd be wiping he'll... good in everything. <laughs> um, yeah. So he sees that, like, the floor is, like, really bad. So he'll try to be super careful getting up and, and going to Ginny. Go ahead and give me a perception check while you're up here as well. Okay. Uh, 19. 19. Well, the 19, you can see like, this fog qu- isn't quite as thick as the fog was from the, the marsh giant downstairs. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of see through it a little bit. Looks like there's somebody or something kind of just stuck laying on the floor in the center of that, that fog cloud. Um, so he'll relay that to Jenny. Uh, hey, there's somebody in the fog. I think they're caught or something. I don't see nothing. Uh, well, Jenny I, I see him. Like, Should we reach out to him? To, you know, putting her hands over her eyes like the sun is in them. <laughs> like it, like that's going to help? <laughs> Where are they? Uh, like, like, I mean, I'm looking right at it. I can't see anything. And so it, it seems a laser like they're on the pointer. floor. <laughs> <laughs> if you look right here... <laughs> In this area. So that's actually uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast um, light laser pointer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Diego sees the laser pointer. And he jumps up and just tears everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to cast light on my staff and use it like a torch. Okay. You cast and light. Take one step closer. Take one step closer. Into the middle of the fog. <laughs> well, that's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go more here. Hmm. <laughs> but I can't see where I was going, so who knows right. where I landed. <laughs> so you light, or you cast light on the end of your staff. Does that help with the, the view at all? Uh, it kind of helps illuminate a little bit since Grubert was pointing out somebody was inside. Uh, Does Grubert see anything that he can, like, like pick up and use as, like, a fan, like a door or a table or something that he could fan to try to get the fog away? Or at least dissipate it a little bit? Too bad you guys don't have a pterodactyl for a dinosaur. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm regretting, yeah. I'm regretting yeah. it now. We've needed, <laughs> we've needed an air elemental constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Diego will climb his way up 
being very careful about the floor and where he stands. And, and Grubert will assist him up. So he will probably stay towards the edge since he doesn't can't see through the cloud. Or can he? He hasn't rolled his perception check. That's Ew. true. Don't push us because we're close to, close the, to edge. the edge. <laughs> <laughs> That is a 16 for Diego for perception. 16 with the the light helping and the uh, the other two kind of pointing out that there's somebody inside the fog. Um, you two can kind of see the outline of, of him in this fog. Of him who? Now this this person is not prone, right? Yes. Okay, so. Uh, poke him with the stick just to see if it makes a reaction with the light with the light side right yes right in the ribs <laughs> <laughs> uh you 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 poke him and he's unconscious or dead or something you can't tell but not react so I'm going to, uh, I guess, say Gruber, help me, help me get him out, just so that he's out of the fog area. So, I guess okay. we Gr- grab Gruber to, yeah, follow her instructions on where he is and try to reach down and grab him and pull him out. Okay. And he's in a bear trap, and you rip his legs off. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Details, details. All right, so are y'all, y'all are both reaching in to try to grab him and pull him through. Like, are, are you helping me to pull him, or okay, there yeah. you go. Yeah. All right, so as each of you reaches in to grab a leg to pull, I need y'all to make a reflex save. Ooh, his third leg's gonna get us. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Watch out for the face hugger. <laughs> I like how you tied that into the story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you said reflex correct? Plus yes. Four. Uh, 17 I got for 13. Gruber. 13. All right. So, Grubert will take 10 points of damage. Dang it. Okay. And Jenny will take. 20 points of damage. Ow, I just got those back. You reach in and these blades just kind of slice across your arm as you reach in to grab them. And yeah, no, they, I guess they reach for his legs and get their arms sliced up a bit. And you know, it's like, I got run. Ah, oh, what is this thing? Whatever it is, it's armed. Let's just go. <laughs> okay, we just leave. let's see so so we know that something cut us do we have anything to do you have like a rope or anything you could tie onto him and just kind of drag him through yeah we got rope but when we tried to cut up yeah we got cut up this guy (laughs) uh the, the three of you that are still in here, uh, go ahead and give me another perception check. Did okay. when when we when well when Jenny yelled, um, did uh, did this person react to that? No. Diego got a whopping twenty five on that one. Okay. Anybody else yeah. get somewhere around there? Hmm. No. I got eight. Uh, 20, 28 for, 28. for Grubert. So Grubert and Diego this time noticed that... So when you reached in, you got hit by those blades. And I kind of caused the fog to move around a little bit. There's a small layer, like... At probably about a foot off the ground. But there's no blades spinning through there. Does it look like his body can fit through that? Possibly. 
Well, then let's take a rope and make a lasso and lasso his legs and pull him out. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Rodeo Kitty! <laughs> All of a sudden, he just has like a cowboy hat on and some spurs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Do you want to try that, Diego? Try to try to get him. Sure. Uh, Diego will definitely try this. While y'all are doing that, Jenny's going to hit herself with the one of cure moderate again. So if you're trying to basically lasso him and pull him through. I make yes. a survival check to see how well you tie the the rope to him. See if it connects well enough. Uh, that is a fourteen. Fourteen. It's not the best knot work, and it's not the best, but it's enough to. Yeah. That'll do, cat. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> you start pulling him through, and you realize that the rope is slipping, and it starts pulling his clothes instead of him. <laughs> He's a butt ass naked. <laughs> <laughs> He's shirt cocking it right now. <laughs> but you work together, and you eventually do. You get him out from under this cloud of fog, and as he is completely pulled out from the the, the fog the fog and the blades vanish that is weird my friends do not understand this um, Gruber will <laughs> try to see if he's if he's alive or not uh, I just saw his token yeah, yep, it's beautiful. is the best <laughs> <laughs> alright so you're trying to see if he's alive uh, yeah. Give me a heal check. All right. So you said roll a healing check. A heal check, yes. All right. All right. Ooh. That's a 19 plus 15. So 34? A 34. Ooh, so he starts he's... the best mouth-to-mouth ever, huh? <laughs> 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 So he's essentially fine. He's probably taking a couple of like uh, uh, non-lethal points of damage from like being hit over the head, mm. uh, but he was just unconscious. He wasn't like near death or anything. Gotcha. Okay. So he relays that to the group. Uh, he's not dead. He's just wounded. Do we just like wake him up and then say our goodbye? What are we doing with him? I mean. I got my hands cut up for a sleeping person. Um, can Grubert cast Create Water and just splash this guy's face, trying to wake him up? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's Create Water and not a euphemism or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Grubert did have a big Dr. Pepper earlier, big gulp. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to cast, cast create water on this guy. <laughs> sure, sounds good. Uh, hey guys, look at Stingray over here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, so you can cast create water on him and it all splashes in his face and I'm sure he gasps awake. Uh, thank- <clears throat> Who are you? <laughs> Who are we? Who are you, <laughs> Mr. Fogman? Yeah, you sounded like one of our friends uh, for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, the name's Thwip. Thwip McClintock. I, uh, I came in here searching for a friend of mine. Have you, uh, seen a little guy, a little name of Porkchop? I ain't, I ain't seen no pork chops around here. No, all I seen was a priest and two parents that are terrible and a baby. And a troll. My friend, we have seen no pork chop. But we crash landed on uh, the old turn rocks back there and I things got a little hairy and got separated and I've been searching for him ever since. I wander in here looking for my little buddy pork chop and uh, this this guy with a round face, real bad complexion, you know. He's got these little scaly pockmarks you know bit of a double chin 
situation going on. And uh, one eye looking one way, one eye looking the other. I said, hey, buddy, look at me. And uh, yeah, next thing I know, he, uh, he starts casting some stuff at me and uh, get knocked out. And here we are. It's, uh, looked like he was searching around this room, though, for uh, someone called Everard or something. He was calling out the name a lot. Like Edward? <laughs> yeah, but with like a V. For you know. <laughs> okay. Did you, no, I don't know if you know if he found what he was looking for because you were knocked out, but you're looking for your pork chop? <laughs> yeah, my little, my little buddy pork chop. He, he does look up to me an awful lot, so I'm trying to watch out for him, make sure I... Uh, Keep an eye out for him. Uh, what does this pork chop look like? It's like he's about nipple high. <laughs> <laughs> so he looks up to you in stature. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you know, a little of off-putting fellow, but his heart's usually in the right place. No, we haven't seen anybody. And it sounds like you haven't seen who we're looking for. This person who kidnapped you, is he up here as well? Yeah, this uh that creep, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. I I like I said, it didn't happen I mean I don't judging by the sun in the sky, which you know, I'm a, a bit of a sailor. I uh couldn't have been that long ago. Hmm. We should probably make sure that he doesn't do this to anyone else. Well, I do that old. I do owe that guy a little bit of a pummeling. Well, we can get your life story later. I think we're going to press on because we're looking for someone too. Well, maybe, maybe we can uh, find old pork chop, and I can give this guy what for. A little bit of the old how you do. So, just for, you know, sake of the audience listening, what does this guy look like? So, my guy is... He maybe looks a little bit rough right now, just because of what he's been through with the uh, crash on the turn rocks and, and whatnot, but... Um, but yeah, he's dressed in like nice clothing he, he's it's it's like finery um he's got these nice red boots on uh that kind of jumps out a little bit and uh he has a scimitar at his side um i'm trying to think of it. oh he has a nice uh very nice blue plush cloak i guess i can kind of tell you what the what the class is he is a swashbuckler Ooh. and i have styled him yeah, they have styled him kind of along the lines of a Zap Brannigan type character, hence the name uh, Thwip McClintock. Thwip. Okay, interesting. Thwip. Now, is Thwip his um, his given name, or is that something that he just calls himself? Or is that something we'll find out later? That is his Phrasma given, I guess you'd say Phrasma <laughs> given name. <laughs> yeah. But yes, his, okay. his, uh, he's a, he's a, comes from a long line of McClintocks. <laughs> <laughs> and he he's a bit brash at times, but uh, usually his heart's in the right place, but it may not always he may not always get there in the most conventional ways. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so in this room, are there doors leading out? There's one door leading out to the north. Well, the way it if you want to follow us, maybe we can run across your friend. It's, uh, well, you guys know my name, but uh, what about, uh, you know, Buttons, what, what's your situation over there? And he points to Diego. Did you just call, call him, him Buttons? <laughs> buttons. <laughs> <laughs> my friend, my name is Diego. Diego Dominus. I am a monk. I'm Genoveva Natasio Ursula de Cascabel. You can call me Jenny. <laughs> that, uh... 
<laughs> My dear, that is a mouthful. Uh, and I'm Grubert McAvoy. I, I I love what you have going on with all of this. And he kind of like motions to his face. <laughs> <laughs> Nice face, very daring of you. Do you like do you like Rude. my big org teeth? <laughs> they are very impressive. Mm, I just brushed them <laughs> last week. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Day goes like I've been I've been wanting to talk to you about that, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Uh, Diego's been wanting to groom him for a while. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> See, I told you he was getting handsy with me when he's pushing me up. Man. <laughs> I'm a clean kitty. <laughs> he's making biscuits on your cakes. <laughs> this is when I need a drop for careless whisper. <laughs> uh, all right. So I guess let's go try to find your pork shop. Yes, let's, uh, like I said, I owe this guy a little something that, uh, left me here. Jenny is just, she's gonna, she's gonna press on and open this here door. Can't check it for traps because she can't do that. <laughs> Diego will first ask our friend, Flip, my friend, do you have invisibility or something before we open this door? I don't uh, often go around skulking through the shadows. I'm a uh, kind of a, you know, stabby stab, ask questions later type of guy. Well, well, do you have some healing? Because, like, you got both of us hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny already healed herself while y'all were. <laughs> oh, well, can, you got me hurt. Did, <laughs> my friend. How did I uh, injure you? Let me... Where, where are you injured? Oh, on these big old forearms. <laughs> Did you... You didn't reach inside the uh, cyclone of splitting blades. Did you? Nobody would have uh, done that. <laughs> it was foggy. And, uh... I tried Diego shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my friend. <I'm... laughs> I apologize. I, I appreciate Did the you... help. But uh, Jenny's gonna hit you with a uh, a cure light. Okay. Hey, look over there. (laughs) Four. Nice. All right. One more. No, that's. I mean, I got hit for ten, so that's 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 no problem. Thanks, Jenny. So now, can I open this door? She's so impatient. Is there anything you can tell us about this person that attacked you? Except that he's ugly. <laughs> Other than that, uh, like I said, he he's able to overpower me, so you know he's got to be a bit of a tough son of a bitch. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he's ugly, so that's about all I know. Well, let's open the door and see what we have. As quietly as she can, Jenny opens the door. Oops, wrong door. (laughs) (laughs) I'm changing in here. (laughs) All right, you open the door. You basically find a hallway. There are a series of portraits hanging along this curved inner wall of this dimly lit hallway. Does Flip recognize the ugly man from any of these pictures? That's what I was just about to ask. None of these paintings are the same man. But there's a lot that you know, aren't the nicest looking people. (laughs) Hey, any of these uggos look familiar to you guys? (laughs) (laughs) But Jenny... You recognize one that matches the statue that was in the center of town. Oh, that's 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 the guy that the the statue. Do you know what I mean from the town? The town. 
Okay, nobody look at me like I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know that face. Each one of the portraits has a nameplate underneath of them. And each one has the last name, Undiomede. The one that you recognize, the brass plate bears the name, Cassius Undiomede, Pact Forger. Pact Forger? Yes. I mean, right off the bat, that sounds like the leader. He's forging them pacts. This portrait's the farthest west one in the room. Uh, this is a man in a sea captain's garb holding a spyglass in one hand and a rolled parchment scroll in the other. And there are eight total portraits here. The final one on the eastern end. I was say, what's the, what's the last one, yeah? Are they all themed, like, sea-themed? They are not. But the one on the end, the far eastern side... Uh, as a bitter-looking older man with the same pinched face and receding hairline. He's sitting in a wheelchair and has a decorative blanket laying across his legs. Standing behind him, also in the painting, in a position to push the chair, is another young man with the same features but doesn't have the same bitterness on his face. And the nameplate on this one reads, Claudius Undiomede and son Manus. So Claudius, Cassius, and what was the other one? Manus. Manus Manes. I thought it was going to be the, uh, it was going to be Lebowski. As you look around the room, or this hallway here, you see that to the western side of this, you know, curved hall, there's a door at the far western side, a door to, like, the southwestern side, and then a door to the North. And to go, to go back to the paintings, do they all look like they are? Can we tell? I mean, obviously, they have the last name, but you, you know, they they look, look related, related. I assume. Yeah. And does it seem to be getting like more and more? What's the word? Like inbred with each painting, or is it they all look pretty okay? Not really inbred. They they all look they look like a royal family, basically. So they're not the Habsburgs. Uh, each one, uh, each one of these portraits is kind of darkened and faded with mildew and age. Uh, each one has kind of a sinister, dark-featured man with hard eyes and pinched faces. Uh, they all definitely look like a family, though. The only one who doesn't have that same like dark, uh, like bitter look on his face is the young son. And that would be Menace, right? Yes. My friends, should we push through to the other door? But there are three doors, Diego. Which one do you want to go in? Perhaps that first one to the southwest. The one that Jenny's at? Yes. So, do you want to open the door to the southwest? She opens the door quietly and slowly. Roll a stealth check. Ten. You open the door quietly quietly and slowly and a whole bunch of crap falls over as soon as you open the door making noise <laughs> it was a closet wasn't it wasn't a closet uh, you open the door to see the rotting remains of a wooden cradle standing before a stone fireplace uh, there's a mobile formed from tiny seashells that dangle above the cradle swaying slowly in the breeze that enters through the open window. So, I mean... Just a little creepy. Go in, and does she see anything else? Do you have knowledge nature? Yes. 19. 19. There's something about those shells that are on the mobile, but you can't quite tell what's so unique about them. I put one up to my ear. You hear Lake and Carthen. But if anybody else has knowledge of nature, they might be able to help you identify these. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, Grubert will walk in and try to help. Uh, 27. 27. Grubert and his druid knowledge uh, 
sees these shells and recognizes them as some of the most rare marine creatures that are found only in the deepest depths of Lake and Carthen. No idea how they were recovered and brought here, but they're very rare. And the shells can be sold for probably 75 gold pieces. Each? Ooh. <clears throat> Total. 75 gold pieces. Oh, I was okay. thinking the same thing. I was like, wow, we just hit, <laughs> we just hit payday right here. <clears throat> well, yoink. <laughs> yeah, uh, Gruber will grab those and put them into our bag of holding. Wait, so do we, so as you know, after you've opened that door and you see all that destroyed stuff and it's like pretty specific, you know, uh, I think Flip's just like, what is going on here? There's been some very bad people with children in this house. And then Jenny is going just to walk up, look him in the face and say, do you know anything about look side to side the whispering way that and that triggers a little something with flip and his uh he sees his, his little cavalier demeanor kind of drops for a second but he puts it right back up and he's just like maybe i maybe i do know a little, know a little something what do you what do you know i know that i don't like to play games that's what i know well then, let's start with you telling me. Are you? You're not. I'm hunting with... them. I'm hunting them. Then it appears we may have a uh, something in common. I, I've been looking for the sea sage effigy. I tracked it to Liberstad, but I seem to have lost the trail. And once we got in that storm, and Porkchop and I got separated, I just need to find my little buddy, and we can get right back on the trail. So you're not looking for them per se you're looking for treasure like a pirate <laughs> let's not use such ugly terms this is uh like a privateer getting closer <laughs> you know <laughs> who doesn't like a little turn a little money and, and maybe a little fame fortune a little recognition for their work I can't fault anybody for that as long as they're working for the greater good yes the uh you know I would never do anything untoward uh, certainly this seems like an interesting situation okay privateer I guess we'll see what you got Diego what's behind door number two yes my friend let's try this door here and Diego will open the door. Okay. Diego opens the door to find a room that has been somewhat preserved compared to the rest of the house. This one is actually pretty well put together. It's not falling apart like some of the other rooms have been. The wooden shutters remain closed over the windows that keep most of the elements out for this one. There's a, a low hearth standing in, on one wall uh, over which hangs an elegantly rendered painting of a tall ship in the midst of a storm. Uh, spaced about the room are three cushioned armchairs and a wooden pipe rack that hangs upon the southern wall. And rifling through everything in this room, basically turning everything over, is another man in a green clerical robe Unlike the others that you've seen, this one, his headpiece is a lot more ornate. It's It stands taller, it's crafted that same reddish fish gold, but it's in the shape of a monstrous fanged fish on his head. And he turns to you as you enter the room and says, What?! Have you done with Everard? Where, where is Everard? I'll kill you all. I'll roll for initiative next time. <laughs> kill him! We'll kill him dead. So is this? Is this